forward into the second century. We've been discussing first century material. Um, but um, who were the main players in the second century, key figures and key Christian writings? Well, you have the Apostolic Fathers to begin with, beginning with First Clement, um, Clement of Rome, uh, which is a fine, fine document which might have come into the canon, but didn't. Would you happen um, to know someone who did a doctorate on that, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, First Clement is a, a uh, and you have the other Apostolic Fathers. The wonderful thing about the Apostolic Fathers, um, they're called apostolic, not because they were apostles, <clears throat> but because their doctrine is, is orthodox, that is to say, their doctrine is apostolic. And what you get is an, uh, you get a glimpse of the early church, the uh, early church in the second, uh, beginning of the second century, and get an idea of the issues and so on, and, and how the uh, doctrines, the teachings of Jesus begin to cohere into uh, more formulation, uh, uh, heavily formulated uh, doctrines. Uh, you, for example, you have a strong stress on the deity of Christ uh, already uh, in the second century, but you have it earlier. What are the main themes in this second century Christian literature? Um, so it's quite clear that Christian leaders just kept on writing letters, just as Paul wrote letters to churches, so did um, Clement and, and Ignatius and others. But what are the main themes? Is it a mirror image of the New Testament or something different? No, it's, it's um, uh, continuing, as I said, because it's apostolic. These are apostolic fathers and they're continuing the, continuing the doctrine. <clears throat> but um, I would say you have a, a lot of emphasis in the apostolic fathers on carrying on the tradition uh, of the uh, confession of Christ as Lord, uh, of his, his work on the cross, and a lot of attention given to the living out of the Christian life. Um, how, how we in, in, the, in the world can live as Christians. So that's a big, big issue for the Apostolic Fathers. How do they treat the New Testament, especially the Gospels? Well, uh, you wait until Ignatius, I think, before you get uh, actual quotations uh, from the Gospels. In First Clement, in 96 AD, you get a quotation of oral tradition, which reminds me of the fact that oral tradition does not stop when the Gospels are written. Oral tradition continues uh, parallel with the written Gospels. So that, uh, and even Polycarp in the early second century is still continues to quote oral tradition in my opinion. But they, they do uh, begin to revere the Gospels, but you have to wait until the end of the second century, or late in the second century with, with Irenaeus and Clement of Alexandria before you have the emergence of the uh, fourfold gospel as uh, the, the, the canonical sources. So did um, these early letter writers in the second century think that their writings stood on the same authority as say Paul's writings? No, they separate themselves from the apostles. They know that they're not in the same category. Clement is quite interesting here. He's the earliest one of them. And he says um, he would not put himself on the par with Peter and Paul. Um, so I think they have a sense that they are the second generation and they know that that um, just moves them a little bit away from the primary authority uh, represented by the apostles and their co-workers. So that's interesting because that means th this notion of authoritative writings is already beginning to be recognized late first century, early second century. That's correct. The authority of these writings is, is recognized very early and it has to do, I think, with the, uh, the apostles themselves who, of course, were with Jesus during his ministry and then expanded a little bit to include the co-workers of the apostles who may not have been uh, members of the Twelve, that unique group, but who were uh, close to them and worked with them. And that is, uh, those people are regarded by the early Christians as being in a special category uh, which enables them to their writings to possess an authority which um, otherwise other writings don't have. Some of the second century Christian literature though becomes wildly speculative. I'm thinking not only of the Gnostic Gospels but even of something like the infancy story of Thomas. You start to get these wild speculation about Jesus' teenage miracles and, and so on. How do we account for this? Doesn't this sort of give us the impression that some Christians aren't trustworthy? No, I, I, th <clears throat> I think uh, you, you have to look at that material and say that uh, some of it's well-motivated. Uh, people mean well, but they get carried away. 
and they're not a part of the stream of tradition that is, uh, I think, uh, rather uh, tenacious in its continuity. Um, and they, for utilitarian purposes, I think they begin to invent material which um, is uh, not historical, unfortunately. And what bothers me about a lot of contemporary scholarship is that they mix together all of these materials, making no difference between those who were really a part of the original core uh, of the tradition, and make no difference between those and, and later documents or later writers, and mix them together. And then the result is, the impression is left that it's all sort of fantasy and, and creation. Mm -hmm.